screen. The uh, rest of the uh, talk will be not like this. So uh, it will be, there will be some code slides on the screen and we will do some basic stuff. But uh, before we do that, uh, who knows about DPDK, rare information that few times? Okay, thank you. And is there anybody already writing DPDK codes? Okay, you guys were bored a lot, but sorry. So uh, I think it worth to make some little introduction about uh, DPDK. Uh, DPDK uh, Data Plane Development Kit is first uh, an open source project. It's a, a NFT component and uh, it supports multi render uh, NIC and uh, it runs on multiple architecture and it solves uh, one problem mainly. That's the problem. Uh, the below is packet sizes and uh, for different speeds, 10 gigabits, uh, 40 and 100. It requires a number of uh, packets to hit uh, line rate. If you talk about small packets, 64 bytes, uh, the amount of uh, packets is a lot. Uh, to hit the line rates. So there's a little calculation below there for 64 bytes. It is for 4G uh, network. Uh, number of packets, uh, almost 60 million. So uh, in each uh, 16 nanosecond, you have a new packet. So if you are doing forwarding or doing something, you need to handle that packet in that time frame. And if you have a uh, 2 gigahertz CPU, that means only 33 uh, cycles. So that's two less. And uh, on the uh, graph, there is some notes. For example, if you are hitting L3 cache, you are still in cache, but last level cache. It takes something uh, 40 cycles. And if you uh, miss the, if uh, CPU miss the uh, cache and goes to memory, uh, it is around uh, 17 nanoseconds. So if you uh, cache miss, your uh, CPU going to memory and fetching the data, you already uh, lost a bunch of packets. So you cannot make line rate. So uh, that's the DPDK, that's what DPDK targets. With uh, DPDK, you can have line rate performance. So how it is done is based on some uh, software concepts, uh, benefiting uh, architecture splatter. So it is not a regular software, mostly uh, lower level. And I, I won't read all of them, but these two pages are basically what PPDK does. There is nothing new here, but uh, all combined together to achieve this one. And I won't spend much time on this. Uh, overall, DPDK is a framework, so it's a set of libraries. And uh, these blocks show different uh, part of libraries. So what we will write. It will be very simple application. Uh, so DPDK is port-based, manage uh, mix in a port manner. So there will be two ports, a packet traffic, uh, a traffic generator, which we won't able to see right now, but see it in the slides, uh, will forward between two ports, that's all. Um, here, with perhaps uh, before end of this uh, presentation at least, so perhaps in 20 minutes, with a hundredish line of codes, we will able to hit uh, line rate packet forwarding. So I think that would be amazing. Uh, before DPDK starts, it, it requires some uh, environments, initialization setups. I won't spend time here uh, to describe them, but uh, very quickly, it uses which pace, so which pace needs to be uh, set up. Also, uh, 
DPDK needs uh, not kernel drivers, but uh, UIO-based drivers uh, to be managed, uh, manage the network card. So this is a, a tool by DPDK, DPDK DevBind, and it shows here two uh, NIC already uh, driven by UIO driver. So this is a basic makefile, and this is all we use as a makefile because uh, DPDK make system supports external applications. Uh, just include them and set our target and search file. Uh, as you can see here, all you need to do is set RT SDK variable. So these are just sample to so what we are doing. I will not talk them. We will start with this one. From this one, to our forwarding application, step by step. In this kind of screen, uh, left side is the code we are adding in a unified diff format, and uh, right side is what happens when we run that code. So uh, we will do change and we will see the output. And we will start with uh, an API call. This is the most basic and most perhaps important one, AEL initialization. AEL is uh, environment abstraction layer. And it does all heavy work. Uh, it initializes hardware. It's on top of hardware. So uh, what it does, initialize memory, initialize cores, and initialize NICs. First, uh, scans the uh, system uh, for network cards, then finds them, probes them through the user space uh, Ethernet drivers. It gets uh, arguments, uh, program arguments, uh, you can pass them to AEL. Normally this simple application, just pass them directly, but in a different application, you want to use some of them uh, for application itself and pass the other to the AEL. And when we run the application, won't do anything useful in this stage. But uh, as you can see, it found some devices. Now uh, your application is aware of some uh, PCI network devices. But right now we are not doing anything with them. Uh, next stage, although all uh, network interfaces probed, uh, you need, we don't know anything about them yet in our application. So there are a set of APIs that helps us learn more about what we have. So one of them, simple one is, is it easy to see the code from there? Okay, that's a problem, but it looks like front side's better, not the back. Because there was a complaint from the same. Okay, I'll, I will try to explain more. Uh, this one, RT ETH dev count. It will give the number of the uh, Ethernet ports right now your applications know about. Uh, and the simple application requires at least two should be. And it will be times of twos because we will do forwarding between them. Again, when we run it, there is nothing special there. This is just to show uh, DPDK as well as has some uh, APIs to control the uh, Ethernet device. It also has some set of uh, helper functions like this RT loop one and there are many. Uh, if you are developing a DPDK application, you may go discover them and use them. And the next thing, uh, that's also something important and perhaps can be new. Uh, RT packet mbuff pull crate. So to describe what it is, you, I need to describe what mempool concept is in DPDK. Since uh, DPDK manages the uh, memory, indeed it has to manage the memory to see the numbers we have seen because uh, we don't want any TLB miss. Uh, so we cannot rely on, uh, we cannot directly use operating system memory allocation uh, APIs. So that's why uh, DPDK use huge space to reduce the TLB miss, first case. And doing AEN initialization, it does a few things. First, finds the continuous memory. Um, then does our memory zones, creates uh, memory segments. 
And on top of this, there is a mempool concept, which is indeed fixed size of memory managed uh, by a ring. So instead of really allocating the allocating code, we are uh, getting some memory information from that ring and putting back all this fixed size. And this is a specialized version of it uh, for packet and buff. And again, mbuff is uh, like Linux skbuff or pbsd mbuff, uh, a data structure, but for dbdk it's both metadata and data, a data structure to point a network packet. So uh, when your network card receives something and that's stored to memory, that's uh, mbuff is your reference to point them. So uh, we, are create, we are creating here a set of mbuffs. We need to do this, and we need to provide this information to the uh, user space driver to manage. So we are mostly doing this here uh, memory management part, but with a simple API. Uh, we have some uh, amount of mempool created here. So I keep going. Uh, next thing is managing the network cards. Uh, okay, we. We have some handles for them, so we can access their driver, but we need to do a few things. This is just preparation for port installation. The main thing will go here, nothing here right now. And we start doing it. Uh, first thing uh, we need to do, this is a mandatory step, uh, configure, this may not be a mandatory step, thanks Thomas, uh, to configure uh, the Ethernet device. It is RT Ethernet uh, configure. I will just switch here to browser. To show our API documentation is already online. If you are doing something, you can find it. And for, for example, that. Okay, it got configured port ID, RxQs, TXQs, and a configuration struct which has this stuff. There are different RX modes, TX modes configurations. Here in this sample, it does nothing, but always you can go and refer to API documentation. Uh, this application uses only uh, one queue for uh, the NIC, but we may use multiple queues. Nowadays, NIC supports multiple queues. And are we familiar why we want to use multiple queues, for example? Anybody in who, who knows why we want to use multiple queues? Again, please for performance because uh, in DBTK, uh, each queue is, uh, queue is a memory location, NIX puts its data into queues and we are using a core to process that data. A again, uh, we are very limited for uh, time. So if you want to process more, what we can do is uh, put data into multiple memory locations and use different uh, physical CPU cores to process them, so we parallelize them. But uh, how can we put uh, network data into multiple queues using multiple, uh, configuring our network to support multiple queues? Uh, traffic can be uh, directed to different queues with uh, different ways, uh, like RSS or any uh, flow director methods, and uh, you can use multiple cores to uh, process them and have getter performance. Right now, this will is on the single one queue. Uh, next thing for each queue, uh, we are configuring RX and TX queues. Uh, for RX, we need to also provide member pool so that driver can use that one. Also, a uh, number of the rings can be uh, configured here. Uh, number of the rings is the uh, size of the memory that uh, Nick used to put the packets in, we can say. Also, uh, in most of uh, APIs in DPDK gets uh, socket ID as argument. If you are in a NUMA system, if you have multiple sockets, that matters uh, which uh, socket you are allocating uh, 
your memory form and which cores uh, you are using for processing. As we talked in the beginning, just to stress, the PDK is mostly about performance. So that's why we are in that level to say uh, which CPU to use for uh, which kind of queue, which queue. We configured Alex and TX queues. Next thing is simple, start the port. So uh, these are what we use for uh, port initialization. Configure it, configure Alex, TX, and start the port. Uh, nothing new when we run the application, but uh, okay, I can see some new argument. That is a uh, dash W. Uh, since we pass all arguments to AEL, AEL already supports a bunch of arguments. One of them is uh, dash W, which whitelists the uh, PCI devices. So uh, it seems my system has many uh, devices, but I don't want uh, the PDK application to use all of them. So that's the way of saying use only this and this. So there's a whitelist blacklist already supported there. Next step, uh, we are enabling promiscuous mode of the NIC. So that's mainly to show uh, you can, there are set of APIs that you can use to configure uh, network cards. Uh, th this is a sample, but we have lots of them. And uh, towards the step, we will configure the cores because uh, the PDKE also can manage the cores, again, for the performance. Uh, this uh, piece of code doesn't do anything special right now. Uh, there is the API RT, AEL, MP remote launch, uh, and this is the Secure Master. So it will uh, run this application for each course except the master. The master is the first uh, core that C uh, DPDK knows and by default is zero. And if you don't give any parameter to DPDK, it will use whole cores in your system. If you have, if you are using a 32 core system, so uh, DPDK will use all of them and you can set uh, which core to what. Uh, AEL MP wait L core will wait for them to finish. And in this step, uh, hard-codedly sets the, uh, which core to use, which is forwarding core one. So uh, in this loop, if it is, uh, if forwarding core is running, uh, it will do endless loop, the rest will just print and exit. Uh, so we have another set of APIs to manage the uh, cores, and in the sample, for example, uh, instead of uh, give, saying application use all cores, dash dash L core parameter says you, uh, the PDK application only use these cores. Uh, and in above PDK uh, example, it is zero and two. And since none of them are forwarding core, application just exit. And if we say application, please use uh, cores uh, zero and one, uh, one will be in endless loop, so we will have to uh, control C to break the application. So this gives flexibility use to course. And next thing, we will start now receiving packages. And it is mainly done by RT, ATH, uh, RX burst. Uh, DPDK use burst receive and transmit because uh, uh, you cannot get that numbers with uh, getting a uh, transmitting packets one by one. So burst is one of the methods mentioned and used. So uh, we are getting uh, burst amount of buffers. Uh, and if we are not getting, uh, for this sample, we are not doing anything. So we are freeing all of them. You have to free all of them. These uh, embers are coming from the mempool we allocated. So it's a limited resource. If you don't free them, you will stop. Functionally, uh, things start. Uh, we are transmitting packets to the uh, other ports. There's a basic logic here. This one and mainly provided by here. So uh, the received uh, MBUFs transmit to other ports. 
this this uh, thing I think a little more than 100 lines. Now uh, not very functional, but uh, can do forwarding between two ports in a uh, 10 gigabit line rate at least. Uh, another just small feature, uh, just to show how we can run uh, this application will swap MAC addresses between uh, send and received uh, packages. This is just preparation. And this is how it is done. The API RT uh, packet MPUF, uh, M to D, MBUF to data. Uh, this gets the data part of the MBUF. So this is the actual uh, data that network packet contains. And we know it's the Ethernet frame, We're casting direct to Ethernet and swapping the MAC addresses. So this will cause performance to drop a little. Still, most probably, it will be line rate. But uh, since you are reading a new data and it is not in cache line, so it needs to be go and grab from the memory to the cache. So uh, this will be lower performance. These are just for adding a few features. Uh, we didn't check if link is up or down in the sample application. Uh, here, the API RT ATH link get helps us get this information. Normally, Intel DPDK doesn't DPDK normally use polymer drivers. So, as core goes and continuously polls uh, the queue, if there is any uh, packets or not, instead of using interrupts again to hit that performance numbers. But, but there's an option to use interrupts, and for link status, it is possible to use link status interrupts too. <coughs> Adding a signal handler, there's nothing specific to DPDK here. We will use it just to print uh, status. This is how we get the stats, RTETH stats gets. There are two sets of uh, stats in DPDK, extended statistics, which uh, Polmo driver provides driver specific, mix specific uh, stats. And this is the generic one. Generic one supported by all drivers. And it will print very basically here. We can see number of the packets received, transmitted, and dropped. That's all I have. Uh, there are references. And in DPDK some, uh, repository, there is a sample application folder, which has, uh, from this level to very high level, almost production level uh, applications. If you're interested in writing some DPDK applications, that's a, a useful resource. And there are many uh, applications there. In IRC, there are always some people, if you want to ask. There are a bunch of uh, applications already benefiting from DPDK. These are just the ones I remember. I'm sure there are more. Thank you very much. Uh, we have five more minutes if you have any questions. Almost five. Yes? Is there any other? Again, please. Is there any more weapons available that are uh, in other languages? Is there any other libraries available? Is the question? Oh, no, it's all C. Uh, and it has kind of has to be C because it's a so low level in some parts. Okay, in a higher level interface, no, right now, which is only C. Yes. How big is the library? In big, uh, in what uh, the binary size, a, a few megabytes, that's not huge. Uh, overall, it's not a very big uh, library. It's reasonable one, I think. Okay, thank you very much, everyone.